Yeah. Is that why when, when, I mean, the ghost dance was such a, it was a disturbing threat. thing to yeah, the U.S. government? Because yeah. the they don't understand what Calvary. Yeah, the ghost dance, because of that, it caused a frenzy and, you know, they said, well, they're going to dance to make us all disappear. We do better you, kill them first. <laughs> we better kill them first kind of before they do that. Do you they think there can be a ghost dance now, an equivalent, a ritual to unite? There are to ghost dances. Not ghost just dances. Native American. No, Other people, fuck yes. The, fuck that. I mean, like, what it represented, the ghost dance. Can yeah. there be a unifying ritual globally from all people, not just Native people, do you think? I think there is going on right now. The consciousness of people is really changing. And we're genetic. changing with the earth, man. That's the whole thing that we think that we're... We are part of the earth. We're yeah, we're and I think from, that those that don't believe what you just said are going to be the ones that are going to fall by the wayside, crack, oh, lose it. Go ahead. I'd yeah. Just lay over there and die. Yeah. Because they're not going to want to participate in what we, what it's we have It's the end times. It's the revelations. Yeah. Well, the end times are here. It's here now. Global it's warming. It's here, here yeah. now. It's about fucking time. Yeah. I've been waiting for it. Party's begun. <laughs> yeah, really. Because you can't Hell's take a great party. You. you can't take it with you. Like I tell my friend, I say, look, if I if a doctor tells me that if I have an exam, and I hate exams, if I go and if I know what's wrong with me, if I go and I say, well, you have cancer now, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go buy me a big old barrel of whiskey and drink it. Oh man, because what the fuck, I don't want to die sober. <laughs> <From the beginning. laughs> I die, but, you know, I don't want to die real fucking loose, man, and not know that I'm gonna die. Just go deep and just fall over dead. Because it's important that the consciousness now, I think, everybody's really together with all this thing. 9-11 scared the shit out of the country. Yeah, I gave a lecture down at uh, Palomar College, and I talked to the, I said, you're supposed to be smart kids in here, man, all of your students, you know. Can you tell me what was going on in the country prior to 9-11? Well, I said, wait a minute, there's 500 of you fuckers in here, man. <laughs> None of you know? I said, you know why you don't remember? Because they went 9-1-1, 9-1-1, 9-1-1, <laughs> 9-1-1. They had those buildings, every channel had it. Yeah. Every yeah. channel was just saturating your brain. You and know, that image. That, that whole thing, man. Yeah. Did you see um, the movie Art School Confidential? No. One of the art school students, like, someone said something, the other one's like, that's so 910. 910, yeah. <laughs> so 910, yeah. And then the symbolism, like, was it all thought out? Was 911, was that mm-hmm. date picked out? It's 11. Were those, and why, you know, why did the United States go after Iraq, man? There's no Iraqis in those fucking planes. These guys were Syrian and, and Saudis, man. And one Yemeni, one Yemen. There was no Iraqis in there. No, those terrorist guys were Iraqis. Well, that goes back to ideas and symbols, which it's are more powerful than reality and facts. He went after him because of his dad. They tried to get his dad. That's why. Oh, yeah, because they, they killed um, Saddam's kids and they, like, showed the bo- yeah, bodies yeah, and shit. Because like, they were... They you know, weren't like, sure if they were pornography. alive or not. They had to see that. That's how they are over there. They want to see that, yeah, that's his body. I don't care how messed up it is, but we want to see it. What do you mean you killed him? You know, like this, this mystery about Adolf Hitler. Did he really die? Him and Eva, no, I don't think so. They're living happily over in South America somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that's that whole thing where the you, you get involved with it because the United States saved all those people, man. The United States saved... Fucking Germany and Japan. Operation Paperclip with Germany. Yes, Paperclip, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just found out that um, mm. one of... See, they're releasing more stuff one of, more Yeah, now. one of the... Yeah, this is like declassified or whatever. One of the Nazis that was brought over with Bop, Operation Paperclip, he was involved in one of the concentration camps, but he started Plum Island where they test yeah, animal viruses. Yeah, testing things over there. Well, if they... Um, Cut it back, maybe. ...found paperwork where... The, Initially, he was trying to find a disease that he could infect people through a tick. Oh, okay. Well, it's right by Lyme, Connecticut, and that's where Lyme disease Lyme was disease named Lyme. after. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like there's so, so many things that are so clear now, but people can't believe it because that would be the end of their beautiful the idea virus. about the American dream and the symbol. And it's all made up. So the reality is overshadowing whatever the symbol represents of freedom and whatnot because it's... You know, it's not about like, like for instance, the GMO thing. People don't know about genetically modified no, food. No. And when they find out, they're more likely to go on the side of Monsanto because in their heart of hearts, one day they wish they could be a billionaire CEO sure. like Monsanto. And, and, and it's the billionaire versus the green freak chewing on their granola. Doesn't have a job. You know, it's like they want. It's all global now, too. You got the Chinese billionaires now. 
They're competing. They're three times as wealthy as Bill Gates. The Chinese people. They're so, they're scary too. So as as a Chinese are real scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> they can walk across the Bering Strait right now with sticks and kill just take over the United States. Even if we had tanks there and machine guns, the barrels would melt after they got hot. They so could still walk over here with sticks and kick yeah. the shit. Well, out they're, they're taking the water. You know, they're just draining the the That's great. Why communism the, can't work there. It's they're draining the Great Lakes and. Really the are. biggest water reservoir in Nevada is like is two thirds of the way gone, and they're just giving it to China. Give it to China. Swiss, you were saying, was it, what, it was like China. Yeah, Nestle's been buying the yeah. rights, so there's a whole water war, and the Chinese are like, "You fucking owe us money. Just give us the fucking water." Just give us the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, as an artist outlaw, what do you fear in the 21st century? Somebody knocking on my door, coming through my door after me because the, I've got. Three yeah. o'clock knock? Yeah, three o'clock knock, yeah. I still fear that. Because of my art. They don't, you know. I've had, you know, raids at my houses over, over the years, and the cop was coming in, he says, uh, who does all this artwork? I go, I do, stupid. <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? So all they want to see is, if you're an activist, what you, your political affiliations, but not your art. That's why it really convinced me that i got to be both. i got to play both things. Because there, it was, I said, you... It's my stuff. I live here, man. They didn't put that on my resume or something, my little jacket thing that you've read about me. Yeah, this preconceived image of you, like, <laughs> hiding under, like, in the bunker or something, building well, a bomb yeah, or if, something. Or... Even if they, uh, <laughs> well, they were trying to say that. He's a gentleman of leisure. But I, carry, I had all these weapons, and I went, if I had that, I said, do you realize they were saying I had mortar launchers? I said, the base alone is 190 pounds for the base of it. That's just for the base. So you're saying I got three of them? In my car, the car would sit like that, man. There's no way I could have that. They try to make it like a public enemy number one stuff because it, it looks good for them, you know, if they capture you. And then once they capture you, they don't care anymore. So does the art threaten them at all? Is art like the ghost dance where it's like they're a little bit suspicious and scared of your ability to create because it's a symbol that might capture other people's hearts and imaginations? I think so, yeah. And even though I did art when I was in prison, too. Um... I've done a lot of prison time. Hey, your your Actually. prison letters, because you sent me a bunch. I have yeah. those. Those are very political, the drawings on mm -hmm. the outside of them. Yeah. Well, I wanted to do a whole bunch of those. How long were you in prison? Altogether, about 17, 18 years. Whoa. Off and on. Wow. Well, for a long time, I just would come out for a week, boom, right back again. Because they didn't want me out. Mm -hmm. I got no love from them. You know, they said, oh, who's that in guy? Or they'd pull me out, see my tattoos, and pull me separately. I said, no, I'm not a gangbanger. What are you talking about, gangbanger, man? Okay, I have the biggest hood in the world. Then. I've got the United States as my hood. I don't have a little neighborhood. No, I've got the whole United no. States coast to coast, man. The claim said, well, all of so it. If you're saying I'm a gangbanger, I've got the biggest hood then. And they don't they don't want to understand that. I think because of the art I've done, um, the guy that I was, in, I was a clerk for, one of the prison guys, what the hell was his name? I forgot his name, but... Uh, he knew who I was as I went to go interview for this uh, job that he had yeah. as a clerk. Mm -hmm. He goes, I know exactly who you are. I'm really happy to meet you. I said, really? He goes, I never thought I'd meet you here, but you have the job, man, no problem. And you have access to all this ink that you can't have over there, you can have it here. Wow. Oh, geez, can I paint too? He goes, oh, yeah, whatever you want. He goes, I nice. know who you are, man. I said, like, cool, man. I just, that's what I did, those, paint, those drawings that I had to show the Bengay. Some of them are on the side, I think. On the, on my, 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 A lot of the wolf side. stuff? The wolves come from, I actually had an encounter with a, a big giant gray wolf with big yellow eyes hitchhiking from Taos going towards Chama. And uh, there's a big old long road down Royal Honda like that, goes up to Chama and then it goes into Colorado. And I had my pack laying there and I just had this feeling something was staring at me and really hard. And I went, there's nobody out here. And I turned around and oh, holy shit. And I turned around there's this you can, once you, when you see a wolf in the in the wild, it's kind of frightening. Yeah. Because you see these big giant legs. Big. Going, Fuck, that is a That's dog. power. That's not a dog. He's got big long legs. <laughs> and his, I still remember his big yellow eyes looking at me like this. His head was sideways. I went, shit. Reached for my knife. Went, yeah, right. What, <laughs> what, can, I do? <laughs> what can I do? What can I do, man? He's got your back. <laughs> yeah. And he just looked at me and sniffed a little bit and charred off. And I went, wow, that's a pretty cool encounter. And then I started seeing him more and more. Mm. So mm -hmm. I thought, ah, that's something I got to do. 
Yeah. We talked. Once I do it, somebody, people, other people start copying it, man. Everybody's doing. This lady in Santa Fe paints similar to my stuff. Because, oh, but, but you don't do it because it's the Indian art. No. Thing. I do you because it's, because it's a symbol of not just the outlaw, but you. In the other interview that I did with you, you said everybody has a little bit of a wolf. We all do. That you yeah. can't control. No, that other people do. can't curb into. No, yeah, people don't like that wild side of the, of the. But we all have it. We're just untaught. When you go to school, you're untaught all this stuff. But it's in us. We all have that wildness, man. We all have a part of us that wants to break out and do harm and hurt and stuff. You know? Now, what would you tell a young artist who's somewhat rebellious and is at that crossroads where they can move to L.A. and paint Scooby-Doo and cartoon realism or go to New York and do conceptualism, yet they have a rebellious side that wants to, like, push culture forward and challenge culture with symbols and ideas and they're and they're divided they don't want to go on the path of the outlaw artist i would just tell them advise them that talk to a lot of other artists and find out what they went through first and where you want to go with what you want to do there's a lot of young Indian artists now a lot of non-indians too they're young up-and-coming artists but they don't know what they want to do and you gotta you gotta make that commitment like i did with mine art and Revolution and art, and it's all part of living and, and dying. You know, it's all part of it. And deciding that you wanted, like, to I wanted to make be a change okay in the with world, that, you know? like, and that yeah, you will die for your for your fucking art. Because I knew that once I made a dis decision through my art, I can make a change. But through activism with my art, I can also make a big change because the paintings are going to always be there. They're healing too. The wolves I do are very healing. Mm -hmm. There was a lady. Uh, there's a She's a volunteer in, here in town at the uh, Indian Cultural Center. She took a poster that I did for uh, down the college down here. And it's one of my wolves that's going to be at the show. And she just gave her the poster. And she was going to go to the hospital and have examinations for what was wrong with her. Well, she had that poster in her room. And she just prayed to it and talked to it yeah. for a couple of weeks. And then the doctors came out and went, how did you get cured? What yeah. happened? And it's the color, I think, and what you see in the eyes and all the color of the painting that just healed her. Because I, I always, we can heal ourselves. We're just untaught all that shit again. You know, we think we and don't know art, how to do it. We yeah. do know how to do it. See, through art, that lady healed herself. She literally healed herself from whatever was wrong with her. I've never met her. I'm going to meet her sometime. She's really old. She's elderly, like 80s, 9 or something. Mm -hmm. But she healed herself. She goes, and they asked her, how did you heal? She goes, from that poster right there. I, I think that there's some kind of healing part, because the, like the wolves have always had the bad rap, man, the big bad wolf. Mm -hmm. They don't like, they don't even like to be around humans. They don't like the way we smell. You know, they might just eat us. They'll just eat our guts because it's hot. That's why they run uh, elks and stuff because they like the meat to be, lean. to blood lean. Yeah, sure, that's why they do it. And you have to think like that because wait a minute, why? Are they, well, because of that, they're doing a dance, man. It's a dance. Mm -hmm. They dance around the thing, you know, and they eat it. They dance, they really dance. like we do. That's I think a lot of Indian people learn by watching. Mm -hmm. you know, still today, you know, you, you can go up through these mountains and there's bears up here. They moved from this side of the mountain over to here because they were killing them up here. There was some uh, poachers. Oh wow! It's ten grand for a little wow. piece of, uh, I think it's a bladder of a black bear, brown wow. bear. Wow! And they're leaving them, and they walk from there over to here. They went underneath the bridges and stuff. I mean, can you imagine a bear out in the wild going, how do I get across this thing? This thing's never stopped. Yeah, right. <laughs> These cars never stop, man. It's like the so they went underneath. They, went underneath. And stuff too. They, don't they figured it out.